blue sky, beautiful flowers, birds singing. What a nightmare. You wonder what the hell you can possibly have done to deserve it. And then you remember. ISJ, the property developer I work for, give me a hundred grand a year, a pension plan, health care, and a nice little motor, just to make sure I don't complain when I have a bloody awful job to do on a Monday morning. Call me the official troubleshooter. So when something goes wrong on one of our building sites, like someone falling off an unsafe roof, I'm there to be fair and dispassionate in such a way that the truth never comes out. I've bust already. <sighs> nice car. They're paying you lawyers too much money. It's not my car. It belongs to a friend. Well, for your friend's sake, I hope you left the car alarm on. I've got an inquest about a gypsy. I'm surprised his family haven't already pitched their wigwams on the forecourt. You know, it doesn't do to cross real Romanies. Is that right? I knew someone who threw some gypsies off his land once. Really? Hmm. This old gypsy woman stared him in the eye and said, Beware the beast with cloven hooves. Two days later, he choked on a chicken bone. Sorry, can I just point out that chickens don't have hooves? Ah, but the restaurant where he was eating was called the Pig and Whistle. Pigs have hooves. A ticket file, please, we will do. Well, yes, it has. Um, if you read page two of the report, um, you will see that... Uh, you, you will see that Mr. Wells fell whilst under the influence of alcohol. The blood samples taken from the body indicate that there were 90 milligrams of alcohol in his blood when he fell. 90 milligrams? That's only the equivalent of about two glasses of wine. Nevertheless, enough to impair judgment. This accident did take place at 8 o'clock in the morning, the implication being that he was an habitual drinker. Forgive me, are you representing the deceased? No, I was his wife. That's to say we used to share a wigwam. According to this, Mr. Hawley, you have a witness who actually saw Mr. Wells fall to his death. Is that right? Yes, exactly. Mr. Callahan. Mr. Callahan, you made a statement to the police that you saw Mr. Wells fall from the roof of the building in Clerkenwell. Would you please tell this court what you witnessed? Mr. Callahan, do you have something to tell this court or not? An open verdict? The widow's a gypsy, she won't sue. You know that for a fact? I doubt the woman can even read and write, let alone understand the law. If it came out that one of our winches snapped, we could be looking at 20 grand in punitive damages. If she sues, could be half a million. I don't think we can afford to take chances. We need her to waive any legal rights to redress. So I suggest that in exchange for her signature, we pay her. Then excuse me, but policy decisions are down to me. How much? From what I've seen, she won't be cheap. I don't think we need to start throwing money around. Give me 50 grand. 
John, as Leon's senior, I'm really not happy about this. And what I don't give to her, I get to keep. Call it an incentive bonus. Okay. Marjorie, get me Michael in legal affairs. There's an angel. Angel. This season is called spring because things spring up. Like grass, for example. It springs up and you have to mow it unless you live in flats where the council do it for you. After spring is summer where the buds turn into leaves and they lift their faces to the sky. There are bees. There are bees and butterflies and people all have barbecues in our garden. But then the summer is over and the first cold winds began to blow. And that is how the false cycles of nature begin all over again. The end. Then the prince came back for a third time. And this time he called out to the princess in a soft voice. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, throw down your hair. And the princess looked down from her tower and said, Come up here, big boy, and give me a good roger. What's a rogering? Please, Tanya, sleep. No, I still haven't forgiven you for being late. Well, I haven't forgiven you for pretending I wasn't your father. I could have been arrested. <laughs> Seriously, Tanya, go to sleep. I don't like the dark. <sighs> All right, I'll stay with you until you drop off. Count sheep or something. I can't. I'm a vegetarian. Fine, count cucumbers then. Since when are you a vegetarian? I decided to be a vegetarian like Mummy was. Well, she ate fish. So will I. And meat. She said she didn't. Yeah, well, she cheated. Lots of times. When? When you weren't there. She never did. Yeah, she did. When? <sighs> In Greece once. Skiathos. I don't remember. Yeah, well, you're only a baby. They had a barbecue at the hotel. Tell me. Well, they were roasting a lamb, and the smell of it, she couldn't resist it. I caught her taking a big lump of meat into the lady's loo. So there you are. She cheated. Are you sure you want to be a vegetarian? No. I just want Mummy back. Who the hell are you? Thomas Price, Jimmy's nephew. I've never seen you before. You must be from that side of the family. Sorry, did you just attach a horse to my car? You better get going, or we're gonna lose them. Right. Nice car. I bet she goes fast. Not with a horse attached. Can I have a go? How old are you? What's that got to do with it?
How come nobody here knows who the fuck you are, my friend? It's okay, Manny. He's a friend of Jimmy's, from the building company. Thank you very much for coming. Now, perhaps you should go back home. to your horse. I sold him. Heard what Natalie said. So, you're a Gorgio. What's a Gorgio? Not a Rom. Then yes, I'm a Gorgio. I'm a Diddy Coy. Half Romany. How much you want for this car? It's not for sale. Your windscreen wiper's loose. It's been bent back. Look, do you know where Mrs. Wells has gone? Why? What's she to you? I'm prepared to pay good money if you tell me where she's going. She's going to a place where Gorgio ain't invited. Not even did it, Well, I'm pretty good at gate crashing. How much? Hundred pounds? A grand. Don't be insane. Suit yourself. You ever tried finding a gypsy? You've got more chance than any smoke to water. Five hundred. Seven fifty. Six fifty. Okay, so where? It's a place called Mick and the Glog. It's in the Black Mountains, Wales. Yeah, well, I'm sure I'll find it. That's all right. I'm heading that way myself. What are you doing? 6.50. Not only get a guide, you get a chauffeur. In your dreams. Promise me you'll be a good girl for Grandma. Yeah, I'll tell her to leave your lights on. I'll be back before you wake up. In your dreams. Yeah, bye, darling. On the road. I won't have a go when we get off. No! No, absolutely not! Stop the fucking car! See, Leon? When there's no road, you gotta sort of make your own. Stop! Me straight ahead is the bank. The devil. It means keep out. We'll drive on then. All right, Tonto. I've had enough of this. Who the fuck's Tonto? You, Tonto. Me, gullible white man being taken for a ride. Look! Bloody hell, what's that? Evil Congre. What? Called Rash Funeral. After they buried a body, they burn all the possessions. That's Jimmy Wells' car they're burning. Hundred years ago, Dad had put his wife in the driver's seat as well. Leon. Well, hello. Yeah, hello, hello, Tanya. Yes, this is Daddy. Yes, I'm, I'm sure you are being a good girl for Grandma. Get the fuck out of here now! Yeah, this isn't a very good time, darling. I'll call you back. 
Sake. Ow! I'm glad I caught you. I thought you might have uh, disappeared with the rest of your charming family. They're not my family. Yes. Um, I don't suppose you know what they've done with my car. Well, they're very wild up here. They'll probably make it into a hen house. You had no business being here last night. Mrs. Wells, I've come here to give you some money. Come on, Bessie. Tax free. A, a compassionate payment for what happened to your husband. Compassion? Yes, a compassionate payment. Mrs. Wells? Will you stop doing that? Mummy says I've got practice. That's what this holiday's for, to learn the old ways. Wait, wait. Wait, wait, do, do you know where she's going? To get sexual intercourse. What? She says it's perfectly natural. But I'm too young to watch. And I'm going to watch anyway. <laughs> oh. I thought I told you to wait for me down by the wagon. I want to see. Go back and stay hidden. Go on. Come on, go. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare her. <laughs> I must say, she's quite a shot with that catapult. It'd be such a shame if those traditional skills died out. There he is, Bessie. Isn't he a prize? Mrs. Wells, I know this is a bad time. So go away. A and I do understand how you're feeling. Do you understand? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, I do. The offer of payment is genuine. All you have to do is sign these papers here. Mrs. Wells? I need you to keep quiet, otherwise he won't follow us in. Come on, girl. Come Sorry, on. who won't follow who in where? That there is a stallion. My Bessie is a mare. Use your imagination. What, do you mean he's going to do it right now? If you close your mouth, then maybe. Uh, look, this is obviously a bad moment. Um, could we reschedule this meeting for later? No. Stay where you are. If you go, he'll bolt. Come on. OK, you'll have to stay close. Come on. Come on, girl.
Look at him. He's a thoroughbred and my Bessie just pulls a cart, but that won't stop him. Make yourself useful. Hold this. Sorry, I do property development. I don't pimp for racehorses. Oh, my God, he's actually doing it. No, he's not. He's missing. <laughs> Mr. Harley, you're going to have to shove it in for him. I'm not putting my hand in there. Oh, well, would you just look for me and see what's going on? Oh, dear God, it's enormous. You're going to have to grab it. No way. Grab his dick and push it in. Don't be absurd. All you have to do is guide it home. If you do that, you have my word, I'll sign your papers. No! Oh. Mrs. Wells, he's shagging my arm. Do you think you could get your horse to fake an orgasm? Quickly! It'll only take a few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> my hand! Oh, my God, my suit! Bessie, my darling, you are going to be a mother. It'll come off a little bit of Daz. Daz? You do not clean bespoke suits with Daz. I mean, look at it! Shit! What? I didn't exactly ask the man's permission before I borrowed his stallion. Well, it's OK. He's not going to shoot at us. I mean, look, he's firing in the air. Ow! <laughs> Fuck me! Oh, I have been shot! I've really been shot! Ow! Grab her and get on the horse. He shot me. He actually really shot me. It's only bird shot. Only bird shot? Look, I'm pumping blood. It's a little scratch. It's deceptive. It might be small, but it's very deep. Suck it. Suck it? Do you have any idea where this arm has been? Okay. It's going to have to come out. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Jesus. Suck it. What are you doing? Evidence? I'm gonna sue his ass. There, Mummy. I did hit him. Will you get off me? Jesus, I'm nothing but bloody target practice. Go and get a couple of dock leaves, Sarah, to put on his terrible wound. I do not need fucking dock leaves! Excuse my language, but I'm sorry. I refuse to be treated by a seven-year-old with vegetation. I have been shot! I'm eight, actually. Oh, well, that's all right, then. Go on. OK. When are your papers? What papers? You said you needed me to sign. We haven't discussed money yet. Oh, why? Right. How much are you offering? Well, I'm authorised to offer you £5,000. £5,000? You think I landed with the last shower of rain? Make it 100000 A hundred? Well, so it's the deal, then. Look, in exceptional circumstances, if I made a special case on your behalf, I could maybe stretch it to 20. 90. Don't be ridiculous. This is an awfully long way to come to go home empty-handed. 30. 70. This is absurd. This is business. You offered five. I reckon you can go up to ten times that. You look like a times ten sort of man. Oh, and you're an expert, are you? I'm a Romany. Yes, and I'm a property developer. I'll settle at 50, no less. Take it or leave it. 45 it is? It's OK. I don't really want your money. I'm sorry? I was just practising. Just give me your papers and I'll sign them, free of charge. Uh, no, I don't, I don't understand. If I'd wanted money for my husband's death, I'd have filed a lawsuit. But I decided I don't want a dead man's money. I call it superstition. Are you serious? Am I laughing? Right, well then, fine. What can I say? Uh, it's been a pleasure doing business with you.
It's OK, Sarah. He doesn't believe in vegetation. Come on, start getting cleared up. Got a pen? Yeah, sorry. Look, just so we're clear on this, you do realise that if you sign that, you waive all right to legal redress? Mm -hmm. um, no, no, but just so that... Yeah, crystal clear. Wow. Some superstition. I'm a gypsy. What do you expect? I can't believe you got me up to 45 grand. 50. Yeah, we would have eventually settled on 47 and a half, trust me. When I draw a line, it stays drawn. Right, um, I'll, I'll get off then. Um, I, I don't suppose you know the number of a local cab company? No. Come on, girl. Are we anywhere near a train station? Look, I'm extremely bad in these kind of wilderness conditions and may even die. I did save your daughter's life! Road is Trom, horse is grey, and man is mush. Mrs. Wells, is there a Romany word for go faster? You're the one who wanted the lift. It's just I had visions of a sort of steady canter. You should understand, Mr. Horley. Not only is this vehicle one horsepower, but the horse is pregnant. Don't you think this is beautiful countryside, though? Yes, and at this speed, you get to see it in such detail. Stopped? It's hard to tell. You need to get out and push. What? We're on a hill. The men get out and push. That's the way it's done. So this deal has now fundamentally changed. She's not giving me a lift. I'm giving her a push. It's only the women and the little boys who stay on board. Fine. push the horse, you push the wagon? Yes, I knew that. Just giving her some encouragement. We're still nowhere. Are we making camp, Mummy? Yeah, as I recall, there's a good spot down the track there. If you go down this road for about a mile or so, you'll pick up a B road. You should pick up a lift down there. All right, girl. Right, so, um, roughly how far back to the 21st century? 30 miles, maybe less. OK. Well, goodbye again. Goodbye. Come on, Bessie. You know, it's, um, it's really strange. This would have been a sort of dream holiday for my daughter. She likes horses. Yeah. Every Christmas and birthday, that's all she wants. Buy her one. Oh, she's far too young. Best time to learn. Yeah, but there's a wise old saying. Never invest in anything that eats while you sleep. Invest? 
Well, it'd take up too much time. Hers are yours. Can't your wife help you? No. Anyway, um... So long, farewell, uh, Frida Zane. Bon voyage. Good luck with the birth. I'd go for herbal pillows and whale music. <laughs> Been a pleasure, Mrs. Wells. Natalie. Yeah. Todd the fox went down into the land of the river spirit and the river spirit said to the poor fox step into my watery parlor and I will teach you how to dance the dance of the ghosts why are you stopped you're too scared I like being scared oh no no out here it's too easy to let your imagination carry you away is that why dad never let us do this no that was because Dad was only interested in your future. He said that this was all in the past. Like speaking Romany? He didn't want people knowing we were different. Sometimes people just don't like us. They think that we're the spooky things out there in the dark. Who's there? It's the river spirit. you take that weapon off her? Well, it's your own fault for creeping up on us like that. I hardly call that creeping. God, I hate the country. I'm sorry. I imagine you thought you got rid of me. We were hoping. I waited four hours. Two bloody tractors in four hours. The second one actually stopped, but only so the driver could call me an English bastard. I tried phoning for a taxi, but my phone's completely dead. I saw the light of your fire. I thought you might be a farmhouse or a wine bar or something. But anyway, now I'm here. Can I just have a blanket for the night? Sarah, go fetch an extra plate. I hope you like sausages. I would have carried on, but the road sort of ran out. You've had a bad day. Yep. Full of surprises, yet strangely satisfying. I imagine your horse might say the same thing. You are silly. Thank you. Can we eat in the old way, Mummy? Having heard what Leon has to say, I think we should. What's the old way? It was considered impolite amongst Romanies to talk whilst eating a meal. Jeez, dinner parties must have been a hoot. From now, Mummy. OK, from now. What, not even if I had... She's asleep. Is that constellation there that looks like a BMW coupe? Is that the plough or Orion? I don't know. You know, when you live under a roof, you don't get to see any of this. Yeah, well... The stars won't be out for long. There's a storm coming soon. Really? How can you tell? I heard the weather forecast. <laughs> Come on, we should get inside. You know, this isn't what I was expecting. What do you mean? I didn't think people still lived like this. We don't. Not anymore. But I wanted Sarah to see how it used to be. So what happens when the holiday's over? That stallion today. It was a sort of injection of venture capital. <laughs> venture capital? Jesus, you are a businesswoman. Manny Connor's got land. I can use his pasture, we build some stables, and I'm going to start a stud farm. So you and Manny? I mean, he's the big guy, yeah? Mm. Big man, big heart. You know, I don't suppose his big-heartedness might extend to him returning my car. I'll talk to him. I'll tell him that underneath that expensive suit, you're... you're cushy. Cushy? That means you're OK.
You must be tired. These will keep you warm for a few hours. So how's Sarah taking it all? Or what? Not having a father. With Tanya, it's the darkness. She's hated the dark ever since. Since what? A year ago, my wife's car went off the road. Sorry. That's quite a coincidence. I'll get you a blanket. weird, isn't it? Sometimes it's easier to talk to a stranger, especially when he knows how it feels. Knows how what it feels? Well, you must feel something. Our marriage wasn't like that, not anymore. Why do you think he was drunk at eight o'clock in the morning? If you get cold, you put another log on the fire. What was that? A fox. Foxes don't sound like that. They do when they're mating. Do you think they might need me to give them a hand? Snake, isn't it? No, it's a mushroom. Mummy, look. What the hell do they want? Sarah, get what you need most from the vado. Nash, Nash. Wait a minute, what are you doing? We haven't done anything. They'll think of something. Natalie, there's nothing illegal about reenacting a scene from Rawhide. Morning, campers. Sleep well? Morning, officer. These are the people you saw? Yeah, that's them, all right. Bloody travellers. Owen here saw you interfering with his stallion yesterday. Oh, I see. So it was you who shot me. What? Interfering with livestock is an offence, as is vagrancy and trespass. I tell you what, officer, tell this fucking inbred sheep molester to get his hands off me, and I will tell you what happened from the beginning. <laughs> oh! Bloody Jippo. Keep your mouth shut, Leon. <sighs> oh. Fancy underwear, though. Better check the lady over. Oh. Oh. No. So he swiveled round, yeah, and I saw him out the corner of my eye, and I'm like. I'm like a panther. Yeah, and I'm on him. Whack! And he goes down. And I'm just standing over him like a... Like a... Panda. Oh, sorry. Panther. What? Look, I mean, if you just kept your head, we get worse than that every day. I admit I feel partly to blame for the mess we're in. Partly. Well, don't worry. Leon, every policeman in the county is going to be looking for us. Get down. Come here. Right. All we have to do is lay low until the fuss dies down. Lay low where? Two adults, one child and a pregnant horse? Apart from that, I now have no clean clothes, no money and no fardo. This was supposed to be a holiday until you came along. Are you mad? We can't do this. We don't have any money. Look, when you're rich, you don't need money. 
You just need presents. Have you looked in a mirror lately? Yeah, can you uh, do something with your hair? I don't have a brush. No, I, I don't want you to brush it. I want you to mess it up a bit. And you, be precocious. What does that mean? If it's water you want, there's a standpipe at the end of the drive. It's OK. I don't want any fuss. Hi. My wife and I and little Neptune I and Napa need a room. Actually, the best suite you've got. I'm talking big, you know what I mean? Great. All I ask is that you're quick, discreet, and no press. Absolute privacy. Do I make myself clear? Uh, press? You do know who I am, don't you? You know about these things. Do you recognize him? That's definitely a bespoke suit. He said Mick and Jerry recommended us. Good God, it's the H. The what? The guitarist from you too. oh my God. No, it's not, it's what's his name? You know that bloke out of Radiohead? So, uh, Mr. Smith. Oh yes, of course. Mr. Smith, <laughs> how nice. Now, a large suite, wasn't it? That's right. Also, we need somewhere for the horse. The horse? Is that like the edge? No, that's like an animal with four legs. Uh, could you just put it in a garage with some oats? And water? Still, not sparkling. Your lucky day, I never do autographs. Thank you. Uh, sir. So, what do we think of the view? Is that okay? Do we like the fountain there, or do we want to move it a bit to the left? We can't stay here. Of course we can. We just hide out here tonight, and tomorrow I'll get the company to send some money to the hotel. Overnight? Where will we sleep? It's a suite. As in, how sweet? Separate beds. It looks like... Boom... Good... I'll have it framed, anyway. Do you think I should take the TV out of their room? Why? Well, they'd probably get drunk and throw it out the window or something. Oh, God, you're so old-fashioned. Rock stars don't do that sort of thing anymore. No, oh, they drink herbal tea and have tantric sex. Tantric sex? Does that damage the furniture at all? This is the minibar. This is a very special place, Sarah. It's sort of like a time machine that will take you on a journey to a future where a packet of chocolate-covered peanuts will cost you £12.50. So, very important. Do not open. We do know what a hotel is. Well, then you will know that in this sort of hotel, they will almost definitely have a dress code. Absolutely no trouble at all, sir. <laughs> right. That yet? Indeed. Uh, mm -hmm. Gerald, you're going shopping. <laughs> right. No, Tanya, no. Look, I can't do another story. I'm on a hotel phone. You will be good for Grandma, will you? No, no, I can't. Because it would be cheaper to fly you here by helicopter. Good night, Tanya. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, tomorrow for definite. Yeah, I promise I'll... Oh. 
Uh-huh. I love you too. So good of them. They gave me this so I could hear her breathing. Are you sure I look all right? Yeah, you're not bad. The clerk asked me which instrument you play. What did you say? Oh, I said the drums. Drums? I am clearly lead guitar and vocals. <laughs> Are you okay? Why? Well, it's just some of this is in French. <laughs> what? My mother lived in Turkey, my father lived in Hungary, Spain, and France before he came here. Hence the Scottish accent. I'm a Romani. I'm from everywhere. But I went to school in Scotland. School? Yes. School. I enjoyed it. In fact, it was one of the happiest days of my life. So what are you going for? Egg and chips. Might I ask if you've already chosen, or would you care to hear Chef Bourdin's specials for this evening? Specials? The chef recommends a magnificent Chateaubriand served with a green peppercorn sauce, or the foie de veau persil. Don't you have any hedgehog? Pardon? It's the latest thing in California. Very low in fat. Just don't try crossing the road once you've had one. <laughs> I'm sorry. Chef Bourdin doesn't serve Californian cuisine. Oh. Perhaps Madame would like a little more time. No, I'll have the fish soup and then the poached rabbit. I was brought up on poached rabbits. Um, I'll try the beet salad, followed by the pheasant, if you have it. Very good, sir. You're aware the pheasant is shot wild, so we'll contain lead shot. That's OK. So do I. No, I didn't get a bloody autograph. I don't know what's got into everyone. His wife is drugged out of her mind. Hello? Hello? Who are you? Tanya. Hello, Tanya. My name's Sarah. Is my daddy there? Who's your daddy? Leon. No, he's downstairs with my mummy. What's he doing? I don't know. Eating, I suppose. Can you go and get him? No, I can't go down and get him because you have to wear special clothes just to get him to the restaurant. It's very silly here. Would you care for a DJ Steve? As we're celebrating, we'll have a bottle of champagne. Certainly, sir. I just heard. We made number one in Finland. <gasps> what? You are so kalubaru. Am I? It means you're good at spinning tails. That isn't really a word for it in English. I'm sure there's lots of words in English you don't have in Romany, like income tax. Look, it's bad enough the police turn us over every five minutes. It'd be even worse if we were helping to pay their wages to do it. That's all right. I'm converted. I made my contribution to your campaign fund, remember? Big silver Mercedes? I'll get it back to you. From Manning? Mm-hmm. The guy you're gonna... Going to what? Nothing. I hope they remember to feed Bessie. Maybe you are, maybe you are. It's none of my business. She gets angry about this time. As you say, he's got big heart, big fists, big cows, big land, big grazing. I think everything. Still, size doesn't really matter, does it? What are you talking about? Nothing. Not a thing. Oh, I was just thinking, I don't know. Maybe you and I could see each other again. 
I should go and see Sarah. Natalie, what do you say? Next time we'll do it the other way around. We'll have dinner first and then assault some police officers. <laughs> Let me see. See what? My mama taught me. There. Your heart line. It's broken. My heart isn't broken. No. No. How can it not be broken? The same way yours isn't broken. I should go. Wait, wait. When my wife's car went off the road, do you know what one of the first things I felt was? Freedom. Can you believe I felt that? Yes, I can. Really? Only I didn't realize that freedom came at such a price. It's as if by wanting it, I made it happen. No, we shouldn't blame ourselves. Shouldn't we? You think Jimmy died because he was drunk? A winch snapped, OK? A piece of rusty, bloody machinery we couldn't be bothered to replace because it would have added 50 pounds to the overall construction costs. I was sent out here to get your signature and keep as much of 50 grand as I could. Why are you telling me this? I really don't know. Uh, wait, I'll come with you. No, no, please, just... Just wait till we're both asleep. No, Bessie. Champagne's not a drink for drinking alone. You want some? Okay. Oh, no, no, hang on. No, no. It's very bad in the first six weeks of pregnancy. <laughs> What the hell were you doing? Well, I just got nostalgic for the crackle of an open fire. No, wait. I, I, I might have burn injuries. I might need dock leaves.
Leonard, this is... You, you're ridiculous. I, I, I know. It's OK. Look, um, I, I talked it all through with the lady I met downstairs. She, she said that exactly the same thing happened to her only yesterday. You know, like a whirlwind romance. She, she never even met the guy. And before she knew it, they were making love in a barn. That left her when she urinated on my shoe. We are not horses. You were true in certain departments. I have to admit, I am no match for a horse. But when did a horse last nibble your ear? Quite recently, actually. But a horse is one thing, a god is something else. A god who doesn't even know one end of a horse from the other. Well, what was it you said? Um, uh, he's a thoroughbred. And, and, and she just pulls a car, but that won't stop them. Oh, so you're a racehorse and I'm a cart horse. <laughs> no, no, I'm just talking about breaking down barriers. You realise? This is a very pretty dress, but it's still me underneath. Do you mind if I check? Seriously, Leon. It's not three days since you were talking about wigwams. I've changed. In three days. No, no. It took about three seconds. When I saw you coming down those stairs tonight. I see. So it was the dress that did it. Maybe. But you know, there's really only one way to tell. If you take off the dress and see if I still love you. to eliminate my clothing from this investigation. Natalie? Natalie? Do you want breakfast in the room or in the restaurant? What do you mean, gone? Gone where? Someone came with a horse box. Who? A rather large gentleman. How large? Huge, actually. I think his car's still outside.
Dear Leon, I needed some time to myself with Sarah. Maybe it's better if we both think this over a little first. Everything happened so fast. I'm going to be at Manny's scrapyard for a while. You know where that is. If you still feel the same way, then you should call me there. I'll count the days. And if I don't hear, I'll know you've come to your senses. All my love, Natalie. How much did she want? It would seem congratulations are in order. He did it. How much? Gary, why don't you chase my coffee? So, you've excelled once again. How much did you get away with? She didn't want the money. What? None of it. It's not what you think. No, of course not, Dylan. Did she actually know what it was she was signing? You're just what this company needs. A man who doesn't give a shit about anyone. You know, for a moment, I thought that what happened with Elizabeth might have changed you. My mistake. Who needs feelings, right? Hello? Oh, hi, Thomas. No, he's not here. Oh, he'll be back about the time. Yeah, then he's driving me and Sarah down to Wales. Uh, I don't need luck, Thomas. You know me, I fall on my feet. Yeah, yeah, I will. I will. Bye. Bye.
Morning, Leon. Um, Divine is hitting the roof about your report to safety at Clerkenwell. Yeah, well, but he hits the roof and someone else hits the ground. Oh, yeah, and I've got some stuff back from the Bloodstock Society. What did they say? They did have a Natalie Wells registered as a breeder, but she's changed her name to Connor. Still want me to get the number. No. No, that's okay. We got more important things to do. It's been a long process. But what a wonderfully conceived and constructed building. And, I have to say, it's also remarkable for being on budget and on time. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why the champagne is on ISJ. I'm in the mood for schmoozing, Leon. Didn't Jimmy Wells hit the ground just about there? Just where they put in those rather pretty flower beds. You know, I almost feel sorry for you. <laughs> All pity gratefully received. You think it's such a lark, don't you? To rip off some poor gypsy woman. Now, oh, guys, happy faces. There are clients present. I was just about to suggest Leon might like to spend some of the 50 grand you gave him on a plaque to the memory of Jimmy Wells. Funnily enough, according to accounts, Leon never actually cashed the cheque. Can I have the day off school? <sighs> Happy birthday. No, you can't. Aren't you going to have any presents? I already have. Well, you happy? Oh, Tanya, please don't spoil the day. I told you, you can't have a horse till you learn how to ride and groom and whatever the other thing is. Muck in or muck out. How can I learn without a horse? It's not fair. Sarah's got a horse and she's two months younger than me. Well, some of your friends have got older sisters. Sarah hasn't got an older sister. Yeah, well, how about with Sarah's horse, then? How can I? She lives in some place miles away. I can't even say it. How do you know her, then? I've never heard you talking about her. Tanya? Sarah who? Tanya? You've got that look on your face again. The same one as when I caught you putting wheels on the tortoise. Sarah Wells. Except she's not called Wells anymore, she's called Connor. How do you know Sarah Wells? <laughs> <laughs> 
I speak to her on the phone. She's called Connor now. Her mummy changed her name back because her dad is dead. And if you're a gypsy, you don't use the dead man's name. Could you just run all that past me again? Is it this one here? The long one? Eight pounds for one call? Oh, I love you! How did you get her number? When you were awake, I phoned you on your mobile from Grandma's, but Sarah answered. I didn't tell you because I thought you might get angry. I gave her my number, and ever since we've been phoning each other to talk about horses. Tanya, has Sarah mentioned having a new daddy who sort of, well, built like a wardrobe? She hasn't got a new daddy. It's just her and her mum. They've got a baby before. They caught him Leon after you. Daddy, are you happy or sad? What are you doing? I'm phoning Sarah's mummy, and I'm going to tell her she can't go around using my name willy-nilly. I mean, have ever heard of a horse called Leon? She won't be there. They're going to stay fair. The what? Are you sure she said today? I don't know. Might have been yesterday. Excuse me, officer. I wonder if you can help me. I'm looking for a gypsy horse fair. Mm, you just missed them, sir. All back on their reservations where they belong. They might get a few stragglers down Digbert's Lane. That's why I'm still here. If you're going down in that car, sir, make sure you put your alarm on if I was you. Have they gone, Dad? Yeah, they've gone. Come on, let's go home. Thomas! What's happening? Right, I'm going to introduce you to someone, and I want you to ignore everything he says and everything he does. Get in. <laughs> Holy shite, it's you! Look, I need to find Natalie. Have you got a death wish? What? No. I have a life wish. Hey! She might be out of the auction. No, Gorgio. Let's have fired your face and put it out with a shovel. Please. Just tell me where it is. All right, I'll tell you what. Um, I will pay you anything you want. Put that away. It's a little way up there by the brook. Thank you. Right, come on, John. Oi, if you're going, you better come with me. Jump in, I'll show you a real motor. So, what am I bid for this two month old called Leon? We have the lady's word that he was signed by a two time Gold Cup winning stallion. So we start the bids at. Five hundred pounds. We hear five hundred. Five hundred. Five hundred over there. Five fifty. Do we hear six hundred? You like driving, Thomas? Better than boring old daddy. I bet he only drives on the roads, doesn't he? Tell you this must never turn up in a school essay, okay? Nine hundred. Do we hear nine fifty? Nine fifty. Thousand. One thousand pounds. One thousand pounds. It's just round there behind those trees. Go on, I'll stay here with a girl. Right, thanks. Thirteen. Thirteen hundred. At thirteen hundred over there. Thirteen hundred. Any advance on thirteen hundred? Fourteen hundred over here. Any advance on fourteen? At fourteen hundred pounds, going once, going twice. At fourteen hundred pounds, going for the third time. Fifty thousand pounds. 
Um, was that 1500 I was bid? No. It was 50,000. You took your time. Come back, come back! Tanya? Sarah? What do you mean I took my time? You walked out on me. I told you where I was going. I put it in the note. What note? The note I left under your windscreen wiper. Told you to get our wiper fixed. Excuse me, sir, but can we get back to your 50,000 quid? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Our horses are not for sale to a gorger. Hey, hey, you keep out of this money. You're not on commission. No, sir. Really? Why didn't you ask Natalie Connor? It's her horse. What exactly do you think you're buying here? The horse or the woman? I'm buying the horse. The woman has a mind of her own. So what did you put in the note? Doesn't matter anymore. We should leave things the way they are. Our worlds are too far apart. No. Look what happened when we married the right person from the right world. So why don't we try the wrong person? You heard what she said. No sale, woman or horse. Fighting for her. Shut up, all of you. Do you want to fight? Oh, for God's sake. Yes, all right, if that's what you want. <sighs> Come on. Manny Connor is the bare knuckle champion of the whole of Northern England. Oh, yeah? Too scared to come south, were you? No! No! Grow up! The pair of you! There's only one person here whose opinion means anything to me. Sarah! Sarah, come here. How do you feel about Leon? Throw in Tanya and it's a deal. £50,000. Going, going, gone. Sold to the man who should know better. So I'll say goodbye to a hundred grand a year, the pension, the car, and the only health care I get now is dock leaves. I'm left with a gypsy woman, two kids, and a couple of horses. Nightmare, right? Yep. And I don't ever want to wake up.